Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA here at ITW 2019 in Atlanta. And joining me today, one of ITW's top sponsors, we should mention, uh, the CEO of HGC Global Communications, Mr. Andrew Kwok. Andrew, thank you for joining us. Jamie, fans, uh, it's nice to see you again in uh, lovely Atlanta. So basically, I think uh, Chicago is too boring already <laughs> after all this year. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. No. Nice place. Having said that, so uh, thanks for the interview. Yeah, oh, our pleasure, our pleasure. And uh, beautiful Atlanta, uh, we get to try out all new restaurants, learn, learn a new, uh, new way around town, and it's, uh, it's really exciting to be here. So, uh, as a thought leader in our industry, I'd like to ask you, how do you see telecom operators shaping the communications ecosystem? So, uh, Jamie, is a big topic. Huh? So, how much time we have? One day? Um, as long as you need. <laughs> okay. Ready, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, for the big topic of uh, how the operator will shape the future telecom ecosystem, mm -hmm. so mainly I can see that uh, it is driving from uh, three different angles. Uh, one, uh, the traditional mobile operator, the fixed line operator, and also the ODT. So those are the known facts already. But having said that, I think the current situation is that uh, that is another ingredient coming into the picture, which is the investment part of the telecom industry. I think the, I think the infrastructure, no matter <clears throat> in the mobile world, while we're talking about the 5G is coming, first, you talk about the spectrum, you're talking about the build out of the 5G, and other than that, you're talking about how to, how the how does the M, uh, the mobile operator plug in the IoT application in the, the whole equation. So this will be the first thing that in front of them to talk about how to shape the future. Going forward, all this kind of mobile operation, 5G and all that, mm -hmm. they have to be supported by a basic local infrastructure mm -hmm. or the international infrastructure, which is mainly a business and a service provided by the fixed line operator. So the fixed line operator, if I would, they will be in the lowest layer in the whole ecosystem mm -hmm. and moving up is the mobile operator. Yep. But having said that, on top of it, there's a whole bunch of IoT application, the ODT and all that will be riding on it to flourish a effective ecosystem. What does 5G mean in the fourth industrial revolution and how is it impacting the individual as well as companies as well as, of course, our network providers? Okay, so thanks Jamie, uh, good question. <clears throat> so. What I can see is that uh, when the people are talking about the fourth industrial revolution, so everyone is talking about the 5G and everything, I think 5G is uh, one of the enablers. Instead of they will be the one who's driving all this. From behind, if we're talking about an effective 5G operation around the world, uh, I think at this moment we need a little bit time for the whole ecosystem to flourish, namely, if you're only talking about 5G, at this moment, everyone is talking about the EMBB, which is the speed. But having said that, if you take a look at this uh, phone set, mm -hmm. so even if you put uh, a very, very extremely high definition on the phone set, it may not make a difference to you and me because the screen is too small. Okay? But having said that, is it only the speed who will drive all this? It is not. It's eventually going down the road, how many IoT applications can be put on top of all this while it match with the people's changing of the lifestyle yeah. into smart X and all this. Right. So I think that matters. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's enabling IoT. Yep. Our smart homes these days have 40, 50 devices when you think about the thermostat and uh, the, the laptop, the TV, the the vacuum cleaner. Yes. So uh, we have a lot of IP addresses, a lot of on-net devices, yep. and we're going to need a better way to deliver the same amount of uh, high-performance services with low latency. Uh, that that end users come to demand, right? Now you can join the telecom market. <laughs> <laughs> and so with the launch of this 5G, um, what do you see as both threats and opportunities to the telecom marketplace? Okay. I think on the flat side is uh, different from country to country or area to area. The spectrum is one of the major focus for the MNO at this moment. Mm -hmm. 
So when you talk about Hong Kong, say for example, in the past um, several years of time, the spectrum price in Hong Kong is uh, comparatively pretty high. We are talking about around uh, just last year, end of last year, the uh, spectrum rebeating is talking about around uh, 38 million to 58 million per wow. mega Hong Kong dollar, not US. Okay, but still, it's pretty expensive. Yeah. So I think the spectrum is one of the so-called hurdle in front of the MNO. How many spectrum I should get it? And after that, basically, is the build out of the 5G network. Mm -hmm. So as everyone recognizes that nowadays, there's a lot of discussion or even argument talking about different equipment to use. Of course, uh, I don't want to cook any uh, company name, uh, but if you take a look, the one in Swedish, the one in China, and all that. So I think this technological uh, 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 development, uh, what I can see is that they should be globalized. It should be synchronized everything with one standard, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But having said that, in the latest development of the trade war and all kinds of stuff, I think they have to redefine which network and follow which protocol. In the FGPP, that is the uh, 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 telecom consortium that define the, uh, the network. So as such, we have the spectrum, we have the technology, a kind of uh, a little bit a hurdle at this moment. Mm -hmm. And after that, I still think that my last point is how the IoT application and how fast it will come into the picture will govern the future of the 5G growth. Yeah, and HGC certainly poised to be a solution provider. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Okay, thanks, uh, Jamie. So basically, uh, all we believe is that the basic infrastructure that I mentioned, mm -hmm. our fiber, our reach, our hub site, which is close to the edge, and other than that, a lot of good IDC data center, uh, all that means a lot to the future development. So we have not stopped any of our investment, and we are actually accelerating our investment as to cope with the future. Mm. So other than that, uh, to provide a solution, no matter for the ODT or the MNO, yeah. so that they can run their own business, is also one of our direction. Yeah, yeah. Well, wonderful. HGC, obviously a brand to pay attention to these days. Thank you, Andrew. For Thanks a lot, Jamie. Oh, our pleasure. We love having you. Every year it's our ITW tradition. Just love it. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV here at ITW. Happy networking. <laughs>